Welcome back to lecture 20.4, lecture 20.4, where we're going to continue talking about our Maxwell relations. Okay, so remember last time what we did was we looked at uh, mixed partials and how mixed partials led us to the compatibility condition, right? And from the compatibility condition, we could write down our first Maxwell relation, which was partial T, partial V at constant S, was minus partial P, partial S, and a constant V. Okay, so this was our first Maxwell relation. where this really stemmed from thinking about our internal energy or our potential energy having natural variables S and V, right? So you can see that our derivatives are with respect to S and V. These are the natural variables uh, for those. Okay, so there's four Maxwell relations and they actually come from the four thermodynamic potentials. Okay, so we, what are our thermodynamic potentials? Well, the first one we know now is our internal energy. Or potential energy. So it's a thermodynamic potential. So another one that we had was similar was when we had our throttling. Remember our throttling process was an isenthalpic process, right? So for throttling, our isenthalpic process, our relative, our relevant thermodynamic potential was the enthalpy. which was H is U plus PV. All right, so the first question is what are, what are we going to have as our, um, our natural variables? So let's work that out. So let's write uh, H as an exact differential. So this is DU plus PDV plus VDP. But remember, du is equal to TDS minus PDV. So let's plug that in. So dh is TDS plus minus PDV plus P D V plus V D P. Or the H was T D S plus V D P. That is for my enthalpy, my natural variables are those that are in the differentials, that are the differentials, right? So S and P, right? So we can say that the enthalpy has natural variables S and P. Okay, so let's remember our compatibility equation, right, which was partial M, partial Y, 
constant x was equal to partial n, partial x, and constant y for um, df equals m dx plus n dy. Okay, so here's our equivalent, dh is tdx. So we can actually just write this. We can write straight up from our compatibility equation. So partial. So what's the equivalent of m? Well, it's t. And the equivalent of y is p. So the equivalent of x is s. And the equivalent of n is v, partial s, partial p. Great. So this is our, so this was our first Maxwell relation. This is our second Maxwell relation. Okay, so now we have had something for S and P and S and V. Um, there can also be conditions where you have a natural variables instead of being S, right? Here we had S and V and S and P. Instead of S, it could be T, right? Where T is the relevant natural variable. So let's do first, let's do... Um, T and V. So if T and V are the natural variables, the thermodynamic potential we call the Helmholtz potential. We write it as F equals U minus T S. All right, so let's write this as an exact differential. DF is DU minus T DS minus S DT. Let's put in so our Helmholtz potential is actually going to be really important to connect to StatMac later. Uh, it'll come up when we come up with our, our uh, grand canonical partition, our canonical partition function. All right, so uh, we're going to write TDS minus PDV minus TDS minus SDT. So you can see DF. Those are going to cancel. So we're going to minus SDT. I think we write minus PDV minus SDT. OK, so let's go straight from our compatibility condition and our exact differential and write our, our mixed partials, our Maxwell relation. OK, so we're going to write. Uh, partial, so let's have a minus to begin with, partial P, partial T, at constant V. So that's partial P, partial T, at constant V, equals minus partial S, partial V, at constant T. There's two minus signs, so we can just get rid of that. And this is our third Maxwell relation. And you can see that our fourth combination is when we have T, but now instead of V, right, if T and P are the natural variables.
So this is going to be a function called the Gibbs function. So this is called the Gibbs potential or the Gibbs free energy, it's often called. This is often called the, oops, I lost my mic. This is often called the Helmholtz potential or, or the Helmholtz free energy. Okay, and, uh, and the Gibbs potential or Gibbs free energy is going to be related to H. It's H minus TS. Okay, so let's write it as our exact differential. dg is dh minus t ds minus s dt. But h was t ds plus b dp minus t ds minus s dt. So you can see those cancel. So we get V dp minus S dt. And so let's compare with our compatibility equation. So from our compatibility equation, our differentials, we can get, we can immediately write partial V partial t at constant p is equal to minus partial s, partial p, and constant t. And this is our fourth Maxwell relation. Perfect. So now we have our four Maxwell relations. What we're going to do next time is we're going to explore them a little bit further and find some of the applications of these relations, right? We now have some, some relations between our thermodynamic variables T and P, right? For example, a T, P, S, and V. We have these complex relationships from our mixed partials and our compatibility equation. What are they good for? So that's what we'll answer next time in lecture 21.